Welcome to a brand new show here at Ipswich Town Football Club. With each new episode, we'll be bringing you interviews and features with some of Ipswich Town's rising stars, starting with youngster Andre Dazelle. Well, Andre, I guess the obvious starting point is how are you getting on? How's rehab working out for you? Yeah, it's all going well, thank you. Um, I've now got back outside running, which felt good in itself. Um, but obviously, I've still got to work hard, and hopefully, if all goes to plan, I'll be back for pre season. Must have been a tough season for you because you were building a real momentum, weren't you? Obviously, with success nationally, and then working your way into your switch team, and then having this injury. Yeah, I wasn't a high. Obviously, I come back, won the Euro Championships, and first game of the season went down. and. I was hoping it weren't a bad one, but in the back of my head, I sort of knew this ain't normal. It's a sort of a sharp pain in my knee, and I knew it weren't right. So I was just hoping it weren't anything bad, but unfortunately, it was, and it's something you have to deal with and just go on with it. That was obviously a big downer for us, which town fans, on what was otherwise a very positive start to the season. But talk to us about your rehab process and where you've gone since that injury against Birmingham. Yeah, I mean, first of all. Um, I've been strengthening my legs up, obviously, and just taking it step by step. Um, some people do come back within nine months or so, but I'm young, I've got a lot of time on my hands, so you don't want to rush anything and do it again. So I just thought the best thing is get ready for pre-season, make it strong, and hopefully if all goes to plan, then I'll be back. So you've been out, you've been running, you mentioned then if all goes to plan, you'll be back. That's very much in your mind then, getting yeah. back into the first team for next season. Yeah, definitely. Whoever it is, Gaffer, um, I've just got to try and get back and hopefully show the Gaffer what I can do and try to make my way into the team and get some more appearances under my belt. We're obviously talking about the academy on a whole today and yeah. some of the youngsters coming through, such as yourself, it's, there's a real buzz about the academy at the moment. Yeah, I think the academy's doing really well at the moment. We've got a lot of talent coming through. We've got Ben Falami getting his debut, we've got Flynn, Tristan. They're all making appearances and they're even getting called up for the international, which is good and will help their development. And you mentioned Falami then, he came on and had his debut against Millwall and really made an impression. These youngsters aren't just slowly getting their way and they're really making an impact. And I think nowadays, like, when you get your chance, you've got to grab it with both hands and show what everyone you can do. And I think Ben Falami did that when he came on. He tried to make an impact and yeah, good for him. And of course, it's lots of players in the squad that we've mentioned trying to battle their way into the yeah. first team. But from your point of view, is it a case of getting there as quickly as you can or do you have to have some patience when you're trying to get into the team? I think it's different for everyone. I mean, some people go on loan, then they come back and they're a different player. But some people can go in straight into the first team and they're already used to it. Like, for everyone, it's different, I think. Um, but yeah, I think whatever, if you go on loan, then I think it will improve you. But if you're ready for first team, then why not? But I guess the underlying theme is the academy is going strong, Ellisbury Town Football Club. There's some good players coming through and it must be good to be involved with that. Yeah, definitely. I've been at the academy since I was nine and ever since I've been coming up, there's been a lot of young players coming through and it's always been like that. But I think at the moment we've got a lot of uh, young players coming through, even from the 16s, 18s, 23s. I think there's a lot that can go on and have careers. And do you think perhaps the core of this Ellisbury Town side in years to come could be that of academy players who've made their way through? Yeah, I think the fans will be happy with that as well. I mean, but the youngsters, we've just got to um, work hard and hopefully just get more and more appearances and proven. Thoughts then there of Ipswich Town youngster Andre Dazelle. Well, we're joined now by two members of the Ipswich Town Academy. We're joined by Chris Hogg and Leo Neal. Thanks very much for joining us on a sunny day here at Portman Road, guys. We'll start with you, Chris, because you actually came through the Ipswich Town Academy, didn't you? Talk to us what it was like for you playing for the Ipswich Town Academy. Spent four years at the football club as a youth player and playing the reserves and um, eventually moved on. And after eight years away, come back and... Uh, a lot of the staff were still the same, a lot of familiar faces and um, come back and um, started coaching in the academy. You look over towards Lee then when you're saying the staff are the same. You've been here a long time now, Lee. You're more of a behind the scenes man, but a lot of work done behind the scenes in getting these youngsters up to scratch, isn't there? Yeah, I think uh, being there, I was just saying earlier on, it's now uh, 1998. I think it's 20 years ago since the academy system started as, as I joined as an, a scholar back then. Um, and it's really evolved and developed over the last 20 years. Um, 
in the program that was probably when I went through it to what it is now. Um, there's a lot more staff involved, there's a lot more specialists. Um, I'm not on the grass obviously coaching as much as these guys are obviously out there working with the players every day but um, it's a big program to manage. There's some great youngsters uh, working their way through the team at the moment, Chris. We've obviously heard from Andre Dazelle, and there's a whole crop of youngsters, not just playing for Ipswich Town, but playing at an international level as well. Yeah, it's, 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 been, it's been really good in terms of product, productivity and with, with the internationals. We've got fewer England internationals are under 16, 17, under 19. So um, we've got boys that are playing for Gibraltar. Um, we've got a couple of others as well that so it, the academy's always done good things. There's always been international players within the academy. Even if I think back to originally when I was here, we had the likes of Darren Bent, Darren Ambrose, who obviously went on to have really good careers and working way through from the years I was away, you've had boys like Connor Wickham, you've had a lot of other players that have come through and done really well. Um, so there's a lot of good work that goes on. But the most important thing is, is, is the boys making a career in the game and, um, and continuing to develop as, as people as well, which is really important. And Lee, obviously the club is currently at Category 2 status. Is there plans still to try and become a Category 1? Team? Yeah, very much so. We're, uh, we're still working along those plans. As ambitious as we all are, really. We, it needs to sit alongside with uh, the club's plans, obviously, um, with, with the first team. Um, you know, myself, I've done quite a few uh, visits to Category 1 clubs. Um, and the, the staffing structure and the, um, the investment into those programmes are, are vastly considerable. Um, and what, what it's important to understand is there's no guarantees, obviously, by doing that, that the, the, the product of the player is going to be better coming out of it. One thing that is obviously massively important as part of the programme is, is the games programme. We're very fortunate enough um, that a lot of clubs, especially at Category 1 level, really do want to play us because, you know, the style of uh, player that we've had come through and the style of play we try and play. Um, so they're very keen to play us, which really helps out. Um, and then obviously I think it's not just that, it's the actual, you know, rather than having uh, quantity of staff, it's actually quality of staff. We've had uh, the likes of Brian Clue been here for, for you know, nearly 40 years um, working with youth players and, you know, having those people and working at the intensity we do, it really fits for our programme at the moment. So to answer your question, long term strain it is to go category one, but it has to fit inside, you know, the business plan of the club as well going forward. Because I guess all the fans at home would be thinking it'd be great to have a team full of young talents come through the academy, but it's not quite as simple as that, is it? They have to be bedded in. Yeah, of course. I think, um, you know, it'd be very, very hard. We saw early on the season, you know, that if you want consistency and um, being able to perform that week in, especially the championship, Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday, it's incredibly hard for them to do that. Um, you know, they, we were fortunate earlier in the year that the manager gave quite a few of the young lads an opportunity to play in the first team and they did very well. But as Chris pointed out the other, it's about having that consistency to go on and have a sustained career. And, you know, at times they might need that exposure to the 11 and sometimes they might need to be looked after and knowing when to dip in them out is really the, the hardest part of youth development, um, you know, and getting it wrong at the right, getting it wrong at the wrong time yeah. can really have a negative effect on, on their development. So um, it is huge and there's nothing we want more, obviously, than homegrown players to come through and play in um, Portman Road in front of a packed crowd and, and do well. So that's that's obviously why we do what we do. And you've all obviously got players out on loan as well. Flynn Downs, for example, is at Luton Town and doing very well there. So perhaps there's some development there that's uh, in place and sending players out that can really help them with that experience as well. Yeah, I think what, what's really unique about that situation is um, we've obviously looked at the whole programme and there is a gap between our under-23s programme and currently the first team. It's quite a big gap. And I think sometimes that jump can be really good for some players and sometimes they need a little bit of a bridge between it. So getting the players out and playing adult men's football and getting get exposed to that um, is, is a real benefit to the players. So the lads that we've got out on loan, the ones that you mentioned, they're now being exposed to something that they've never had before. Flynn is a great example. Chris has been monitoring while he's been out there. He's, he's expect going for a title that, you know, he's not had that opportunity going through the academy system uh, and obviously playing in front of large crowds and the added expectation and pressure that, you know, will put him in good stead for this time next year when he comes back to here for pre-season. And it is obviously great to have these youngsters playing on the international stage as well. That's one of the most fantastic things, isn't it? It certainly is. I'm obviously, um, you just brought to Andre and obviously the summer he had last year, uh, um, obviously winning the championships that he did. And so they're, they're real uh, lifetime experiences that are, that are key in development. Um, hopefully we'll have uh, members of, of the academy involved in some major championships again in this summer with England. Um, and again, hopefully they'll do really well because the experience they get from that is massive. Um, it helps them obviously develop out with our programme um, within the England DNA, but also um, the confidence and the variety 
that that it gives them and the exposure to to um, different styles of game, different methods of different coaches, and um, being around different environments is, is is massive. And then they'll come back here uh, full of confidence, and and we try and get them going here with, in terms of getting them into our first team. So Chris Lee, thank you both very much indeed for your time here at Portman Road today. That is all we have time for. But make sure you stay tuned to all of our social media channels here at Ipswich Town Football Club. Loads of great content to bring you in the upcoming months. Also, make sure you get in there with your early bird season tickets. That then ending soon. The future though is bright here at Ipswich Town Football Club. We'll see you next time.